All right, friends, it's Tinker Nut time. Have you ever run into the problem where you're trying to set up a game server, web server, or camera server, and you can access it just fine from inside your network, but whenever you try to access it from outside your network, you lose. Good day, sir. Last week on this channel, we set up a WordPress blog. Awesome. Isn't that like what old people do? This week, we're going to figure out how to access it from the great beyond. The great beyond line. See what I did there? No? Let's begin our journey with the story of Lan and Wan. Lan liked to keep it local. He would talk and connect with people around him, but he didn't really go beyond that until he met Wan. Wan took Lan out of his local environment and showed him that the world was full of other lands like him, that he could connect and talk to them. Whee! until a T-Rex came and ate them all up. If you have multiple computers or devices at home, that means you're probably using a router. A router is a device that lets multiple computers or other devices connect and talk to each other, therefore creating a LAN or local area network. All of these devices that are on your LAN can connect and talk to each other using a numerical address called an IP address. To know what your device's IP address is, you can open up a terminal and type ipconfig for Windows or ifconfig for Unix. Now if these devices have internet access, that means your home also has a WAN connection or a wide area network connection. The internet can also be defined as the world's largest WAN, which kind of sounds like a put down. Ha! <laughs> Look guys, it's the world's largest WAN! Similar to how your LAN gives each of your devices their own address, your WAN will also have an address. And to find that out, you can open up Google and type in what is my IP address. But keep this one private because anyone that knows it can try to access stuff inside your LAN. So this leads us to our current predicament with our WordPress site. By default, any server that you set up is only going to be accessible by the other devices inside your LAN. In order to access it from the greater internet, we have to tell our WAN to forward requests to the device inside our LAN. Alright, so one method of doing this is called port forwarding. Port forwarding is a setting in your router that tells traffic going to a specific port on your WAN to then be forwarded to an IP address inside your LAN. But how do you get to a router settings? Remember a few minutes ago when I told you how to find your router's IP address? Well that same command should show you a number for something called a default gateway. In most home setups, the default gateway will also be your router. So you should be able to take that default gateway IP address and paste it into your browser's address bar to bring up the login page for your router. If you didn't set up any login information, then you probably just need to use the default username and password for your router, which you can find here. Once you've logged in, you'll see all the different settings for your router, and what you want to find is the setting for port forwarding. If it's not really obvious where the port forwarding settings are, then you can look up guides online for your specific router. Once you've found it, you can give this setting a name and then type the port that you want to use. For web servers, the default port is 80. If you're setting up a different type of server, then you can find a list of common ports on this web page. Then type the name of the computer that you want to forward traffic to. Finally, you want to enter the WAN port that you want to use. I'm going to be using port 80, but if you wanted to keep this more secure, you could change the port number to a more obscure number. Save the settings and you should be able to enter your WAN IP address into your web browser to pull up your website. Whoa, 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 back up the gravy train. Didn't you just say that we should keep our WAN IP address hush hush? Susplain yourself, Tinker Dude. You should still definitely keep it hidden, and the way to accomplish this is to assign it a domain name. Since most home WAN IP addresses change sporadically, we need to use something called a dynamic domain name. And if you want to use a free one, you can go to freedns.afraid.org to sign up for a free account. Then you just create a new subdomain, call it whatever you want, select a top level domain, this one looks nice, and then point to your WAN's IP address. Now you can type that awesome new subdomain into your web browser and your server should come up. Fantabulous! Now if you wanted a domain name more like www.google.com, that's known as a top level domain name and that's something that you would have to pay for. Now some of you more eagle-eyed, eared, rabbit-eared? 
Viewers may have noticed, I said that port forwarding was one way to do this. Port forwarding is the most common way to do this, but it's also the most insecure way of doing it. Another more secure way is through a method called SSH tunneling which is something that I'll cover in a different video. Got any questions or tips? Maybe something I screwed up or said to embarrass myself? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.